back to the channel. Today we're going to be sighting in deer rifles. Um, a few things to always remember. Keep the rifle unloaded until you're ready to shoot. Keep it pointed down range. Um, make sure you're wearing your ear protection. You know, no need to go deaf. And uh, y'all just stay safe and we're going to show you how we do it. So I'm going to show you our setup here. This is my Remington Model 7 243 sitting on a Caldwell shooting um, vise on a Caldwell stable table. Uh, it's pretty portable, kind of heavy. Uh, this is our shooting setup. As you guys can see right here, we're about an inch high at 50 yards and a little to the right. So we're going to bring it over about half an inch and we should be right on the money. Um, the one shot at the top, I pulled a little, but that's just shooting air. Um, it's bound to happen. That's why you always shoot more than one. And uh, yeah, so we're just gonna we're just gonna keep on keeping on. What we're doing now is we're getting set up to shoot the 35 wheeling. Thought I'd walk down range here and show you guys our uh, our progress on the 243. Yeah, that's a Model 7. It's a youth model rifle, but it's super light and super convenient for around here, especially in the government woods. But as you can see right here, it's about an inch and a half high at 50. We're going to stretch it out to 100 here in a minute um, after we shoot the 35 wheel in over here. Uh, don't want to shoot that one too terribly much, but you know you don't want to move paper more than once. We'll stretch it out to 100 and see where we're at, and we'll go from there. Y'all just keep on watching. All right, guys, we're getting set up to shoot the 35 wheel in. It is a CVA Hunter single shot hammered rifle. As you can see here we've got the difference between the 35 wheeling on your left here and the 243 on your right. Just how much bigger of a bullet that is. It's got got a lot of thump. Uh, but we're going to get it sighted in and ready for deer season. We're going to stretch them out to about 100 yards. Make sure they're good there. We'll be all done for the day. We've shot my CVA 35 wheeling. My Model 7 Remington 243 and my dad's Encore 35 wheeling. And they're, they're all good at 50, so we're stretching them out to 100. To make sure we're all good and we'll be good for this deer season. The, uh, the CVA 35 wheeling sighted in at 100 yards. It's real good. We found out that the scope that was on the Encore bounces around too much. You just can't get it to hold to zero. Um, so we have to switch it out. We have another scope to go on it. We have to get some uh, rings and bases for it. A little bit better set than the ones that are on it right now. It's a really good scope and you want good bases for that. But it, uh, I can't stress you how important it is to always check your um, weapons before going after game. Because if you're, you're like, oh, they were good last year. Well, maybe you bumped them moving around in the gun cabinet getting a different gun out or whatever. You always need to check them to make sure that you can get a good, clean shot on an animal. You don't want to wound one and it run off and die and not be able to find it. or You, know, you don't want to be embarrassed because you missed or anything like that. So always, always check your rifles before you go hunt. You know, pattern your shotgun before you go turkey hunting. Before you go squirrel hunting with a 22, check it. Check everything. Check your bow, everything, every year to make sure that it's on. So you don't end up like we are now. We're swapping scopes and stuff. You know, if I'd have made a shot with any of these rifles in the woods, I either would have missed or I could have very seriously injured an animal and run off and died. And that's a waste of meat and stuff. And we don't want to do that. We want to be good ethical hunters. You know. So y'all take it easy. We ran into an issue with my 243. Um, the scope's just crap. It is a crappy scope. So we swapped scopes. We've regrouped it a little at 50, and now we're gonna stretch it back out to 100. And check it again um, because when we shot a hunter last time it was shooting like six inches high and you could barely see through the scope scopes about 15 years old so you know scope technology's come a long way it's a good thing that we're out here reshooting it's a great shooting rifle you know we're gonna see if we can get this done all right guys let's just uh take a minute we're gonna talk about gun safety a little bit uh, a few rules and stuff since we've been out here shooting all day i feel like uh, you know maybe not necessarily need to cover them but i always like to put them out there number one Make sure your rifle's unloaded around kids. Any firearm, make sure they're unloaded around kids. Make sure they're locked up safe whenever kids are around. You know, understand, you know, for protection, you want your firearm in the house. And understand people keep them loaded. But make sure your kids can't get to them. Make sure they are locked up and they cannot be got to. 
because accidents happen and it's happened a lot. We just have to make sure that our firearms are safe and away from kids. Number two, don't ever point your firearm at something you do not plan on destroying. Taking its life, destroying, whatever you want to call it, do not point that firearm at anything you do not plan on destroying. Number two, I mean number three, always keep your finger, finger off the trigger until you are ready to shoot. Like I said, accidents happen, people make mistakes, but you can lessen that by keeping your finger off of the trigger until you are ready to shoot. Number four, always, always be aware where your muzzle's pointed at all times. You know, you don't want to lay it on the seat of the truck, somebody opens the door and there's a barrel pointing in their face, whether it's unloaded or not, always know where that barrel is pointed at all times. Now, that all being said, we're going to talk about gun care a little bit. Now, we just got done shooting. We shot a lot of rounds today. When we get done, we always wipe down our guns to keep them from rusting, lube them up, and then put them back in their safes. Um, do not leave them in, like, the soft stockings and the, the soft cases and stuff like that, or even the hard cases with the foam in them, because they will rust. The humidity will get in there and get in that pad. It'll make it wet. It may not feel wet. But it's enough to rust those blued barrels if they're painted or coated. It's not that big of a deal. But if they're blued, they will rust and they will rust quickly. And you'll go to get it out and you've got this rusty, rusty mess of a firearm because you left it in there. Um, if you're putting it in your handgun in one of those little handgun safes, make sure you put some dehumidifier packets and stuff in there to absorb the moisture. Uh, if you have a gun safe, it's always good to put a dehumidifier in there too to keep the humidity low and stuff so there's no moisture inside of there so your firearms don't rust also and occasionally just take all of them out wipe them down lube them up and you can put them back just to keep them in good working order so that's going to be our video for today guys y'all take it easy and stay frosty